Rachel. I thought I'd have a go at explaining something about how my bow arm works. Today, there's been a long evolution um, over some 50 years of playing and recent influences including yoga practice. I noticed that uh, there are some clevernesses now that are worth sharing. And so I'd like to begin by explaining the geometry of my bow arm as it is now. Let me just uh, play a few notes. <laughs> and I can substantially forget that I have a bow arm in a little tonal improvisation like that. Um, I can be at one with the sound and trust that my technique will just happen. <laughs> perhaps intuitively right than another one. So how could I claim that my bowing technique is now more natural and intuitively right than other possible bowing techniques? Let me try. I figure that since I've decided to sit tall and upright and to investigate how I could play without having to alter that upright posture in order to perform certain parts of the technique. For example, without needing to lean forward <coughs> to play in a higher register, or say to turn to the left to play on the A string, or indeed to turn to the left perhaps and raise my shoulder in order <coughs> to get more bow pressure. So there it is, I, I find it more appealing to be able to leave my foundational posture alone in the getting of various cellistic techniques. It appeals to my common sense, I might say. Or I would say, what a nice thing if one could play that way. So then I, I, I recognize a rich connection of my arm into the rest of my body, its musculature, and skeletal system, nervous system. But I'm able to examine possibilities, choice making for the geometry of my right arm, more or less, more or less as if the shoulder is a mildly, gently fixed point of reference. So I know where my shoulder is going to be. I've already decided how I'd like the cello to be positioned against my body. More about that on another video. Um, and I've found no good reason not to bow perpendicular to the string. So with, with those uh, points of reference, I'm able to know where, for example, my hand needs to be if the bow is perpendicular to the string, say on the A string. And so it is that I can see the value of being able to straighten my arm to get to the tip, without which I might more or less cheat a little bit and come around the corner in bowing on the A string. So, it occurs to me to announce whether I'm a member of a so-called pressure school or weight school when it comes to the bow arm, and I think I might belong to an elevation school, uh, an elevation more or less. But it's more complicated because, as I'll endeavour to show you when I discuss getting different bow pressures, um, this elevation of my arm is 
modified with the need to get more bow pressure, but it might be largely seen as elevation more or less. Now, so how is, how is it that I can feel free and comfortable and, and uh, find everything that I need without undue effort? I draw your attention, first of all, to my move to elevate my upper arm in playing the cello. I think that any, any claims that the string will hold up your arm uh, at the tip are patently ridiculous and even at the heel you can see that if I let my arm down from the shoulder it will indeed become playing wise useless. So with an elevated upper arm now here are the niceties. The elbow joint being a simple hinge joint if the eye of the elbow is about horizontal my forearm is suspended by my upper arm. It can't go anywhere. And if the eye of my elbow points somewhat downward this way, then my forearm, without the intervention of upper arm muscles, will, will travel towards gravity. And similar wise, if, if my upper arm is rotated like this, then my forearm will tend to fall out that way. Maybe this could be useful at times, but uh, I endeavour to stay in a neutral position of the rotation of the upper arm so that uh, my forearm is suspended. The next choice I would make would be, well, do I involve myself in any twisting of the forearm out of a, out of a neutral position? And I would say, well, if I can play the cello without tension in my forearm, not sure. Most of the time that would be great and I find that the weight of my hand um, will tend to pull my forearm back to this neutral position where my forearm feels relaxed. Then I might ask, do I need to uh, pick up my hand and hold, hold the wrist flat in order to play the cello? I think the decision here becomes a little bit more tricky, but suffice to say for the moment, in the end, I don't pick up my hand to play the cello. So the feeling in my wrist is of letting go when I play. The hand doesn't fall quite as much as this all the time, I figure because of small and larger tensions within the fingers. So this is the feeling of my bow arm, really, of elevating the upper arm, of the forearm being caught up by the elbow joint, of there being no twisting in the forearm, so I don't particularly belong to a pronation or supination school, I belong to a forearm neutral school, the wrist is let go, and so we come to the fingers. My desire here is to hold the bow as if I can hold it without moulding my fingers to it, and so the only modification that I see necessary, apart from lifting my arm cleverly in order to bow, is perhaps to take the thumb over a little bit to the stick. I could test whether these assertions um, belong in the real world or they're just a sweetness of my imagination in the following way. I can, for example, uh, do some bowing and stop and decide whether if I remove my hand from the bow, my arm position would need to adapt in order to just be in the air relaxed, and I think that it doesn't need to adapt. I'm not saying I'm perfect in this, but I'm getting pretty good at it. Similarly, I could stop at the heel, remove the bow, and find that my arm is just the same with or without the bow. At the tip on the A string, a kind of extreme of extension. It's quite difficult, I think, to feel perfectly comfortable with a straight arm. I guess I don't always straighten it completely. Um, then there is cleverness in my organization of this kind of arm geometry that leaves 
my arm relaxed at full stretch. Positioned almost exactly the same with or without the bow being held. <laughs> function of the anatomy of my hand in this relation with gravity and without any particular muscular effort, the bow fitting with some skill into a naturally relaxed hand. You see also it in this moment that uh, an imaginary line across the knuckles places the insertion of the bow into my hand uh, at, at quite a different angle from 180 degrees to the line of the knuckles, which would be, say, that. And it's very important for my comfort and the organisation of my arm, as I've described it, that the bow is not inserted at 180 degrees to the line of the knuckles, but quite a lot of degrees further out. This way. <laughs> A lot of experimentation resulted in this way of organising my wrist, as I've said, so that it's not being pulled down or being pulled up. There are probably very viable bow arms that pull the wrist around in various directions. Let's say down. I have no doubt that the human body can work very well this way, but it's not my choice because this to me is an unnecessary effort. In, in the course of getting from one end of the bow to the other, and a kind of uh, impurity given the model I'm after, which uh, the model I'm after seeks to um, be true to an idea like everything that's needed and nothing that isn't. A, a lovely familiar purity kind of idea. soon.